it's episode 43 of the Keto for Women show. You're listening to the Keto for Women show, and I'm your host and nutritionist, Sean Miner. This show is designed to empower women to find their own expression of the keto diet to maximize their health and happiness. Now let's get started with today's episode. Hey there, friends. Welcome back to Keto for Women. Thanks for joining me. Hope you're doing well on whatever day you happen to be listening to this episode. I myself am doing very well because I'm officially moved. Just an update from last week's personal information. I moved over the past week. I'm recording my first ever episode in my new podcast setup, which is very similar to the last setup and not very professional, I guess we'll say. I still use boxes to prop up my mic and things like that. But hey, it works. It works for me and it makes it very mobile, which is important. So I'm really, really enjoying my new space. It's been just awesome just a great experience all around. Even the moving process wasn't that bad because there's elevators, which is really nice. So it's just been a really great experience. I'm so happy to be somewhat settled. I am not totally settled here because I'm still missing quite a bit of furniture. I'm still waiting on some furniture that will be delivered next week, and then I will actually feel like this is home. Right now, I'm kind of dealing with a bed on the floor and one chair and one table. That's pretty much it. But I've been able to cook and make some food in my brand new kitchen, and sleeping here has been really nice. It's nice and quiet and dark, which are things that weren't the case in my old space, and it's just been really fun. Of course, still some organizing to do and just things that will kind of happen as I go, but the big stuff is done. So it's a very good day here in the Keto for Women studio. Another thing that happened before I had even totally moved in is that I got my shipment of oh-so-good bone broth. And as you know, I've been talking to you about it a few weeks now. And it's just something I'm so passionate about. And I'm so in love with the company. And so if you've ever gotten a box of oh so good bone broth before, you know that excitement that happens when it arrives. And so I had that on top of the move, they got my new address and I got a nice shipment, nice big box of all my favorites from oh so good bone broth. Like I mentioned last week, my favorites are the spicy pork and the signature but they're all pretty amazing. And they now have soups, which I'm very excited to try. But it's just an amazing company. And it's so important to get your bone broth in. It has to be a regular part of your basically holistic lifestyle, your new way of living that involves really healing and being nourishing to your entire body. And bone broth is like an ancient thing that was used for years for medicinal purposes. And we're finally getting back to that point where it's becoming this really important factor for a lot of us. So make sure you get yourself a nice big box of oh so good bone broth delivered to your door. It's pretty much the best thing. It's so exciting when that shipment comes. You can do so by heading to ohsogoodbones.com. And if you use the coupon code key the number for women, then you get $10 off your order. Heck yeah. That's keto, the number for women when you go to ohsogoodbones.com. That's O-S-S-O goodbones.com. Now, I want to move right into today's episode because it's a great interview that I have with my friend Vivica Menendez. She is the owner, the creator of the blog, thenourishedcaveman.com. She is a certified whole foods nutritionist, blogger, published author, and one of the leading voices advocating for a food-based approach to healing. She's the founder of the Healing Foods Method, a 14-week online nutrition program where she works one-on-one with clients to turn their health around, utilizing a therapeutic keto-paleo diet. 
This is a therapeutic approach to eating that utilizes the healing power of foods to address the incapacitating symptoms of many lifestyle diseases that have plagued our modern lives. She has made it her mission to help others reclaim their health and quality of life. She also has a cookbook released in December of 2017 called The Keto Paleo Kitchen, and it is fabulous and beautiful. So you'll have to all go check that out over on Amazon. So without further ado, here is Vivica. Hi, Vivica. Thank you so much for joining me on Keto for Women today. Hi, Sean. Thank you so much for having me. This is going to be fun. (laughs) I already know this is going to be a great conversation just from what I know about you, from our past conversations, and just what we were talking about before we started recording. So (laughs) we're ready for this. First and foremost, let's introduce you to everyone listening. I'd like to hear who you are, what you do now, and where you came from and how you got into this keto space too. Okay, thank you. So I like to call myself a holistic practitioner. I am trained in nutrition and I've also taken a lot of additional courses from my original nutrition course, which are restorative endocrinology and the thyroid. I also did a lot of studying in sex hormones and basically just whole hormonal profile of women especially. And then I as you know, because that's what I'm most known for, also really dug into the ketogenic diet for a number of years. So I started working with ketogenic diets for my patients, for my practice before keto was ever really popular and nobody really knew what keto even meant. And that's like only five years ago. So I came through a personal journey of health, like I think a lot of holistic practitioners and people that call themselves healers in general, we come from a personal healing story that was really the fuel that motivates us to share what we have gained and the knowledge we have gained. People sometimes think that I look so healthy and, you know, young and vibrant, but this was not something that I really inherited. I had to fight for every bit of my health all my life. And it started out with gallbladder problems and who knows what else. I think, yeah, I had mercury toxicity from a mouthful of amalgams. That was a big deal. And I didn't even know the significance of that until kind of much, much later. But that didn't even do so bad because I kind of always ate pretty good considering I'm Italian and I was lucky enough to grow up in a traditional Italian diet, which doesn't only mean pasta and bread, but a lot of fresh and local food, a lot of good meats and vegetables. So I come from that first was my gallbladder. And if you look in my blog or my bio, I always talk about my health story, but the gallbladder was what took me to see a holistic practitioner who was a chiropractor that does nutrition. And with this doctor, I started taking supplements and I started trying to manage my health in a holistic way. I never liked doctors and my mom was the one that instilled this knowledge of holistic medicine in me. Like as a kid, I was lucky enough to receive acupuncture and homeopathy instead of just conventional medicine. So it really opened up my views to a more holistic way of doing things and not just relying on quick fixes. I remember going to a chiropractor and when I was like 9, 10, 11 and getting adjusted, getting needles and getting homeopathic remedies. So That's amazing. Yeah, I consider myself very lucky in that sense because for me, it just was normal. Whatever you learn as a child becomes part of what you kind of consider normal, right? Mm -hmm. Which could be good or bad. (laughs) But it really opened my mind and my perspective. And funny enough, my parents went a completely different directions and back into really conventional medicine after that, while I went really into holistic healthcare and more wellness care. So with that, like was about 10, 15 years of trying to manage my own issues of gallbladder with supplements and diet. But there were some elements missing and I was just able to barely manage and never really resolve. And that led up to the point where I was in my early 40s and I met my nutrition mentor, Dr. Penner in Chico, who really wanted me to work for her and she pushed me. She really like pushed me hard to study nutrition. 
she finally succeeded and she said that I was going to be perfect. I used to be a food photographer. Then I started cooking more and more and was helping friends with like cooking jobs and, you know, friends in restaurants, friends that are catering. So it was always around food. And food has always been my passion. So she was like, well, nutrition is just the natural progression of your love for food and for holistic well-being. So I did start to study nutrition and working for a practice. And that's when I started peeling off some layers of my own health and understanding my body to a much deeper level. I finally did resolve my gallbladder issues when I started detoxing a very crucial piece of the puzzle that my first doctor had never addressed. And also my first doctor is a really brilliant muscle tester, but it doesn't know a whole lot about lifestyle and diet. Mm -hmm. And so that piece was also missing. So when they started bringing together the lifestyle and diet with detoxing and the supplements, that's when things started to really turn for me. And that was in my early to mid 40s. But what happens as you get older and you have a certain lifestyle, things also start really showing up for you for good or bad. And so that's when I had my first encounter with prediabetes because I had been eating a really clean diet, but definitely not a low carb diet. I was eating paleo and local and organic, but I also had fruit trees, a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And we were baking a lot like gluten-free, but it was a lot of heavy carb and drinking wine almost every day and really just not thinking about that component. So when I discovered where I was with the prediabetes, that was kind of my rude awakening, but it just totally propelled me into going deeper with the nutrition and what was the missing link. And that's where I found the ketogenic diet or the diet found me in some really serendipitous way at that time. And so I really dove in and I immediately recognized that this is the piece that was missing. Mm -hmm. The missing link between metabolism and fixing all those metabolic issues that we bring because I also had gained 30 pounds. I've always been kind of naturally thin. And then all of a sudden I started blowing up and I didn't understand why. I was always hungry, like starving all the time and needed to eat more and more and more. Like those people in conventional diet advice, you need to eat five times a day, six times a day, a snack every two hours. Of course, because your blood sugar is all over the place. And that's where mine was, Mm -hmm. was bouncing up and down like a yo-yo. And that means your insulin is bouncing up and down like a yo-yo. And so it means you're always hungry. And so there comes the ketogenic diet, which was love at first sight for me. (laughs) Same here. Yes, because there is really beautiful, amazing advantages to this like hidden metabolism, this secret genetic code that it's hidden inside our body is so fascinating. You know, it's just like finding a treasure chamber inside the pyramid, you know? (laughs) I love thinking about it like that. Just this like secret thing that's hiding in our body. It's so true because for most people, they're not utilizing that, right? It's there, but most people don't know. And it's just kind of hibernating. Mm -hmm. So I like thinking about it that way. Yeah. And for so many years, as we had this high availability of carbohydrates, we almost forgot completely about ketosis. Right. People like 100 years ago, maybe, or 200 or 300 years ago, nobody talked about ketosis. But ketosis has always been there, Mm -hmm. you know, and Mm -hmm. that's why you don't drop that after three days of fasting. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Exactly. So how did keto change your life? Well, no more prediabetes and no more weight. And really, like, I started guinea pigging on myself before I eventually very quickly started putting that in practice as well and created a course for the practice I worked for that led for me to then create my own program with a ketogenic diet. But it really opened up this, like, what does it mean to be keto adapted? What are the benefits? How do we use it? And how do we apply it in our modern lives? Because this is, like I said, an ancient program that is designed for survival and is designed for nature is like divine design, you know, of nature that is so intelligent 
we can barely comprehend like the depth of intelligence of our human design, I think even now. But it enables us to survive for long periods of time on stored fat. So when winter comes and all the grasses, all the fruits, all the veggies are gone, what are humans supposed to survive on is fat and some protein and the fat that you have mostly on your body. So just discovering how this keto adaptation, there is more than just being in ketosis because there is a lot of talk, of course, of keto adaptation these days, but I don't think a lot of people that start to do keto, especially women, really understand when and how you get keto adapted and what it means. And it's not always that easy, depending on your metabolic profile, depending how insulin resistant you are and how unstable your blood sugars are, how reactive you are to carbohydrates. And this has to do not just with your insulin, but also with your liver and the ability of your liver to convert fats into ketones, which is not the same for every liver. It's very different from person to person. And it also depends on your ability to stay flat blood sugar, liver production of ketones. And there was another thing and I just forgot it. <laughs> well, even just like stress management and sleep and just your lifestyle stuff, right? Absolutely. That as well. So hormones do play a big role in that mm -hmm. always, especially for women. So once we are able to get keto adapted and go through this process the right way so we reach the state of keto adaptation. And honestly, Sean, I don't think that maybe 20% of the people who are doing the ketogenic diet now really reach a satisfactory state of keto adaptation. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad you said that because I agree. Yes. I agree. Especially if you're trying to do it on your own and you're not seeking the help of someone like you or I, it's pretty staggering. And that's why a lot of people feel like they have problems or it's not working working for them or they're seeing weight gain versus weight loss, X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. it's because they're not actually there. Absolutely. And they will not know what it really means to be there because I remember one of my first encounters with the keto diet, it was a few months after my research, I found the book from Maria, Maria Emmerich, Keto Adapted. And there is a lot of really good stuff in that book. But that was not really what led me to understand, or even though the title itself of the book is Keto Adapted. So I was thinking this will really teach me how to do keto adaptation, but actually it wasn't. I had to find books on physiology of keto, pretty obscure, written by people in the 80s and 90s who nobody ever knew about and they are still not ever known. And piece it all together through my experience and the experience of my patients in order to see, because I'm not a doctor, I'm not a biologist, I'm not a nurse, never been in the lab or studied the minute processes of physiology, but I have the great advantage to work with real people in a real clinical setting, my practice. And I do have my own ways of tracking and testing that don't require constant lab work or constant fancy equipment. Because when you do a study and I find that, you know, this is just my opinion. And yes, I am not a doctor. And I know I'm a lot of times kind of discriminated for not being a doctor or nurse. And I am actually happy to not be a doctor because I have the mental and practical freedom to work in a different context with different parameters than what conventional medicine is giving us. Right. And research as we know it these days in 2018, medical research is for me highly biased. It is driven by interest and it is done with less than pristine parameters and environments. I know because I have scientist friends and doctor friends and I talk to people and I see the behind the scenes. But when you talk to the public, they take it as the gospel. You know, this is the word from the high source. It's black or white. This is it. Right. When instead, I don't think is necessarily the truth. So I invite our listeners to really use a grain of salt in whatever they read, especially when it's labeled scientific research, it's not necessarily true. 
And so often you can find some research that says one thing and then you can search again and find research that says the complete opposite. So right there, it's like, okay, well, something is up. And this is where really, again, like you're talking about having the ability to do it for yourself, be your own experiment, Mm -hmm. see how things go for you. And us being in the clinical setting, we have the ability to look at a wide variety of people and kind of get a really good sense of what's going on just based on our own practice. Yes. Which is so huge. Yes. So going back to keto adaptation, that's where we first started. (laughs) But yes, so there is a real value to keto adaptation and there is ways to really see the difference in a person once they kick in that gear of keto adaptation and what kind of changes it does on your body. Just a little quick snippet. I was just getting a message right before we jumped on this podcast from a patient who have been working, I have a year long program with her and we've been taking her through this process of keto adaptation. You would think that for her, she's younger in early thirties and very active. She's a yoga teacher. She's a practitioner herself. And you would think that for a person that thin and that fit, it would be easy to keto adapt. It took us about three months to keto adapt her. Mm -hmm. And now that she's finally on the other side, she's just like sending me videos and things like, oh my goodness, this is like, oh my goodness, so different. And she's having all these breakthroughs of what it really means to be keto adapted and how it's making a difference for her. But it's really interesting because she did a carb up for the first time, like a big carb up for two nights in a row, eating a lot of carbs. So she was scared of going there. And then this morning, she's back in ketosis. And she's like, my ketonics is broken. (laughs) (laughs) And she's sending me pictures of it. And like, this is not possible. I had all those carbs last night. And I was like, no, honey, you're keto adapted. That's called keto adaptation. And it's amazing. And I have very similar experience too. I have a six week course for women and, you know, very few of them come out of that six weeks actually being keto adapted. You know, there's a lot of work that happens beyond that. And it's a kind of a course where they're forever members. So then they come back three, six, 12 months later and they say, okay, now I'm keto adapted. Now things are shifting. The weight is coming off. I'm feeling the energy that I'm hoping to feel, but it just takes so much longer. So why do you think that is? Because speaking to women, and this is why I have a whole podcast just for women, just for keto, Mm -hmm. because it is so different, I think from men too. So what do you see that makes it different for women? I mean, I'm sure the hormones play a role for sure. Yeah, that was like my number one thing is like the hormones. (laughs) Yes, that's why this whole podcast is in existence because of those darn hormones. (laughs) (laughs) We know, right? (laughs) Well, I would say number one, hormones. Number two, toxins. Because hormones are kind of the talk of the town these days. People are really becoming aware of the importance of hormones as we do ketogenic diets because the keto diet is kind of an excuse to go a little deeper than just calories in, calories out paradigm. Mm -hmm. So people are finally really starting to understand the complexity of metabolism with all the different players. You know, it's like a soccer team. This is not like playing tennis, calories in and out, you bounce it against the wall. But it's like a whole game, like a soccer team, plus the one sitting on the bench, you know? Totally, yes. And they all need to play together in order to get the goal in. Right. (laughs) And so it really is a good thing to explain the importance of hormones. But the first in order of like what we need to address when we want to address weight loss, for example, for women is toxicity. It's so huge. This is really important to talk about. Yeah. And it's really huge in the world today because we have created a super toxic world. Yes. Even from like 40 years ago, me as a kid, where I grew up to now, where the, our kids grow up right now, the level of toxins and plastics and endocrine disruptors. And this is like a whole other really long conversation, but it's a very different picture. It's a very different panorama. You can barely go swimming today in the ocean because it's so polluted. You can barely eat seafood because it's so contaminated. You cannot even think about drinking water from a stream because, you know, God knows what's in there. 
even your tap water that maybe like 100 years, 50 years ago, tap water was clean and safe to drink. And now think again of all this. Not anymore. In there, you know, and I still have patients and friends that tell me they drink tap water unfiltered. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, seriously? I know. And it's really simple things like that, that we're not considering even the stuff we're putting on our skin, you know, our makeup and our lotions and all those things that were at one point, very, very different. And then now the modern world has transformed them to be pretty toxic themselves. Yes. So when we do keto for women, I think that these are very important aspects that we need to consider. And just right before we jumped on recording, we were talking about why keto fails and like the kind of current mentality that women, especially in general, people approach the ketogenic diet with. I feel like it's a little different than most other diets because ketogenic is really not a diet. It is this ancient program inside our body. So it's part of our physical makeup. Ketosis and keto adaptations are parts of our natural physical genetic code. The Atkins diet, the South Beach diet, the whatever weight loss diets, they came and went, Weight Watchers, whatever you want to call it. Those are kind of artificially created to force the body to do certain things, name, lose weight. Mm-hmm. But ketosis was not invented by nature in order for us to lose weight. It was invented to keep us alive. Right. So there is a very different foundation on which this lifestyle rests rather than like if we compare it with Atkins or if we compare it with anything, even like AIP or any other specific diet that is just trying to achieve one goal. Keto is not that. Ketogenic is a physical state of being that is natural to our bodies. And what is also natural that people do not realize is that it is perfectly natural and normal and actually needed is to go in and out of ketosis and not necessary to be in a state of ketosis constantly because that is also not exactly aligned with our design. We are designed to skirt in and out of ketosis And if we try to mimic our, we evolves and reproduce that to kind of reach back to an ideal place of health and well-being that matches our design, I think that going in and out of a state of ketosis is part of that natural state of well-being. Well, and especially if you're approaching it from the lifestyle piece that it is, which is what you're saying and like, you know, it just being this physical state in your body. But if it's a lifestyle and it's something you're doing kind of for the long term, then that's just going to naturally happen. You're not always going to be in a state of ketosis because there's going to be moments where you have more carbohydrates than the day before. And it just happens. And that's a very natural place to be where you can have these ins and outs. And it's just life at that point. Yes which is really, really nice. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to the keto adaptation and the toxins and that kind of thing, because one of the things I know you're really passionate about discussing is the emotional or mental toxicity that we have going on. And I know that's something that we have in common. We see a lot in our practices with women who want to go keto. They're still approaching it as a diet. So they're coming into it thinking it's going to be like the next Weight Watchers, the next Atkins or the next this or that. And so they're coming in to it with this kind of toxic mentality, if you'll say, and it's keeping them from getting results. Yes, it's the quick fix mentality, unfortunately. And I see that so much, so, 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 so much. As I look through the internet and, you know, I'm really tuned into keto because that's what I do. So I research it, I look at it, I see what other people are doing out there. And keto is really becoming the magic bullet, the quick fix solution, just change your macros, everything will happen magically. And I feel that in my worldview, this is the kind of mentality that has definitely come through the general mentality of our culture right now. You know, we have kind of grown into the quick fix mentality and the not taking responsibility mentality. And that we have been kind of indoctrinated into it. And look at Western medicine and conventional allopathic medicine. You go to the doctor, the doctor look at you for five minutes and, you know, barely listens to you. And then 
it kind of dismisses you with a prescription where you take a pill and you don't have to do anything else. And that pill is going to fix your problems. I mean, I have crazy stories coming from my patients with their doctor experiences, but we are really led to believe by our culture and our society that there are such quick fixes. Mm-hmm. Look at advertising. I don't have a TV and I don't watch television. But if I ever happen in front of somebody else's TV, one thing that shocks me every time is that they're allowed to advertise medication. For me, that is absolutely appalling because medication should not be advertised. It should be given by doctors. When absolutely needed. When absolutely needed. And that's it. But now we are advertising medications like a glamorous, desirable thing that will just get rid of all your issues, like whatever may be. Let's say you have high blood sugar and there it is, come metformin in a pill and there goes away your problem and you're going to be living happily ever after with quality relationships and great quality of life. Before we get any further with this episode, let me take just a second to tell you all about the Ample Ketogenic Meal Replacement Shakes. I'm so excited that this product is now out there. I can't wait for you all to try it. It is the first all-in-one keto meal replacement shake that gets the nutrition from quality, real ingredients, which is so, so, so hard to find in the ketogenic space. You all know how important real food ingredients are for me, and I want to pass that information on to you. And here we now have a really great opportunity to have a meal replacement shake Something that's super easy for us to grab when we're on the go, running errands, don't have time for breakfast, don't feel like cooking, whatever it may be, we now have a place to turn, and that is the ample ketogenic meal replacement shakes. 70% of the calories in this shake come from premium healthy fats such as MCT oil powder, coconut oil powder, things we're already eating on a daily basis anyway. There are only 6 grams of net carbs in each meal. And it comes along with 40 billion CFUs of probiotics, which is like 10 times what you would get by drinking a kombucha. So they're really taking care of our gut health. They're keeping that in check while we're on a ketogenic diet. They have the prebiotic fibers necessary too within this shake to feed the good bacteria in your gut. They've thought of so much. It has potassium and magnesium so that if you're going through the keto flu or you just want to work on your electrolyte balance, which is something we talk about a lot on keto for women, that's taken care of too. And the best part is it actually tastes amazing. I taste so many ketogenic products. Most of them I don't like, so I don't even tell you about them, but I love the flavor of these ample shakes. You're going to love it. I can't wait for y'all to try it. In order to do so, because they are a sponsor of the Keto for Women show, you lucky listeners get 15% off your order when you go to amplemeal.com and use the coupon code keto the number 4 women 15 at checkout. That's amplemeal.com and use the coupon code keto the number 4 women 15 to get your 15% off your first order. I will make sure to have this information linked in the show notes so you can get easy access to your 15% off. The diet industry in particular, I mean, every single thing is trying to get you into that quick fix mentality. And now that keto is becoming more popular and it's becoming a huge thing within that diet industry, now it's just translating into that, which is not what it is. And that's often why so many people quit too soon before they're even keto adapted, like we just talked about or they don't get the results they are expecting in the time they're expecting because someone out there told them it was going to happen that way. And so they think it doesn't work and they move on to the next thing. That's right. When really they need to be keto to heal their bodies. Yes. And it's, they need to be keto and they also need to embrace a more holistic perspective about what healing really means. Because I think keto can be done in many different ways. Which is good because like not every way of doing keto is good for everybody. So there are different ways for different people at different ages and different lifestyles. But at the same time, it's much bigger than just ketogenic. It's about the perspective of what does it take to be healthy and live healthy 
in your mind, in your body. And I think that what I try to share with the people that I work with is that the first step for me in this journey is taking responsibility for your own health and well-being. Mm -hmm. And it's also taking responsibility for everything else in your life, which means that you become an active participant in your healing and in your health. And not everybody that comes to keto has these huge healing journeys to undertake. Unfortunately, a lot of people do nowadays because that quick fix mentality has created a lot of really big problems. Yes, 100%. And a lot of people don't even know coming into keto, they think they're just going to be changing their macros around. And then it turns into this whole big change because they realize then, and keto kind of almost brings it up, how many health issues they do have. Exactly. And it's sad, but it's good because it is, for me, it's an opportunity for this change of perspective and an opportunity to educate on a better way to manage your health. I'm constantly reminded that we are facing some big problems as a society, especially here in America. And those problems, like we always talk about the cost of diabetes and the cost of cancer and the cost of like syndrome X, metabolic syndrome with all the ramifications. And what about if we want to take it a step further by what about the cost of, on the health of our kids mm -hmm. and the next generation? I was just having a conversation with one of my scientist friends. We were talking about autism and vaccines and he was telling me some statistics. I'm not big on statistics. There are a lot of people out there that use statistics and they're really big on them. I'm not one of them, but he told me the statistic and I've been thinking about it ever since. And he say that if the rate of autism continues as it is in within 50 years, our nation will not be governable because of the state of mind of the young population. Wow. And this is from somebody who is like really deep and important in the science community. Yeah, that's scary. So not just an alternative, whatever you want to call it, like me. <laughs> <laughs> he is one of the people that does the scientific research, you know. Right, right. Kind of on the other side. And it's great to share perspectives back and forth with open-minded scientists. It's really enriching for both sides versus like headbutting that can happen sometimes. When, But when you have an open mind, you can have a conversation with anybody, even if their opinion is you know, light years away from yours. Right. Which is important. Yes, it is absolutely important. So that really made me think, this is what we're walking towards if something doesn't change. And we have the ability to make some changes. We have the power now. We know what it can be and we know how diet can affect that. And so now it's just getting that information out to the masses, which I'm huge on my listeners really helping me do the work and helping me get the word out there about keto and what it can do and what it can help. But let's go back to talking about this kind of first step, which is you have to be in charge of your own health. And I'm sure that you get a lot of people coming to you for help that haven't even thought about it. They're not even there yet. And they're strictly coming, I want to lose weight. I want this and this and this to change. I want the scale to say this number, but there's so much back work that they haven't done yet, right? Yes, absolutely. And for me, the weight is really the tip of the iceberg. Because there are very, very few instances where a person is carrying excess weight that is just due to like them overeating all the time, but otherwise they're very healthy. Right. There's always something hidden. Yes. Most of the times, I would say there is a percentage of people who are just carrying weight because of overeating. They just need to change their diet, but it's small. It's a small percentage. And most people, especially women, when there is extra weight, especially stubborn weight that will not come off. Sometimes it's like in excess of 50, 60 pounds, 70 pounds, 100 pounds they need to lose, they have in excess and it's not going anywhere. That means that the weight is just the tip of the iceberg. And that's where I tell my patients or my prospects, you are kind of at the crossroad right there. The moment you realize that you need to do something, you want to do something, there is the crossroad. And the crossroad points in two different directions. One is 
just continuing kind of that unconscious quick fix mentality where you just want things to be done for you and you don't care the cost. So people will go into HCG diets, they will do lab band surgeries, they will take pharmaceuticals to help them reduce appetite. But there is a price tag attached to that. And the other side is a holistic perspective where you are ready to face the reasons and the issues underlying. So to look at what's lurking under the surface and what do we really need to do to lose weight. So losing weight is a symptom of you getting healthier. Of course, there is a price tag attached to that. And that is not just most of the times it means working with a professional and that has a price tag, of course, because (laughs) professionals need to survive and pay their rent too. (laughs) Right. But the price tag is also that you need to do the work yourself. Yes. The price tag on the other side is you lose your health. And you never will regain your health if you continue down that road. And you're going to be more and more dependent on quick fixes and crutches and band-aids in order for you to manage, meaning usually more medication or more coping mechanisms on a mental level, more crutches, which is going to just keep going down that road of like chemical dependency. That's what I see. And I'm not talking addiction to drugs. I'm talking addiction and chemical dependency to medication and also certain foods like addiction forming foods like sugar. Right. So it's really up to the individual to make that choice. And we can, of course, show a better way. We can lead them to better choices, but the choice is always up to the individual. And I totally agree that we need to spread the word and we need to really show the benefits, the immense benefits of such a healthier lifestyle and the benefits of being keto adapted, of eating ketogenic, especially a clean and wholesome ketogenic diet, and just the benefits for the quality of life. But I think not just for us. And in my age group, in your age group, but also for the next generations, because we are talking physical health, we're also talking brain health. That is really, really important. And we all know that a ketogenic diet is beneficial for your brain health. It really supports maximum brain health. And I see it in working with my patients all the time at any age. Even if kids don't need to eat ketogenic, but because a ketogenic diet cleans you up so much and cleans up your lifestyle and your pantry and your fridge, that at the end benefits the whole family. Right. So it ripples. It really does. It makes such a big impact. And it's so important to start early and try to get the whole family on board as much as possible. Even just taking out some of the sugar and some of the processed foods makes such a big difference for kids just to get them started there and then kind of branch out from there. So we're talking about getting women on board with the long-term health benefits of keto, not seeing it as a quick fix. So let's say that we have someone who's there who understands, okay, I know I have to be in this for the long haul, which I think is most of women listening, although there still is always in the back of their head Like, why is the scale not moving? How long is this going to take? What's wrong with my body? Is it the fat that I'm eating? Am I eating too much food? All that stuff, you know, because we're so conditioned to that kind of mentality where it's like, we cannot step away from the scale for a minute or stop counting calories for a minute just to let our bodies heal. So how do you kind of take a person into that kind of realm where they can just let go of that stuff? I'm going to be very honest with me. I think that at a certain level, we can never completely let go of that stuff. Yeah, agreed. I deal with this every single day, self-image, self-worth, step on the scale, not step on the scale, fit in the skinny jeans, not fitting in the skinny <laughs> jeans, darn it. <laughs> we are women. We're women. We're it's, it happens on a daily basis. Our bodies change daily. Yeah. Yes. And we deal with that programming on a daily basis, but... The practice, the work into bringing awareness into these processes and just like being able to take a step back and to kind of like put it in perspective, not let it dominate you, don't let it rule your life. It's still going to be there, but the more awareness you bring in, the less this kind of process will control you. 
So you are regaining the control over your life and your choices. Just like when you stop eating sugar, you regain the control, you lose the addiction. And so you regain the control over your food choices, you know, because you're not ruled by sugar anymore. Sugar is not giving you these unbeatable cravings where you go for the fridge and eat everything inside. And the same thing happens on a mental level when you stop the addiction to that vicious cycle of thinking. And I tell my patients a lot during detoxes is like the detox happens at all levels. We are detoxing toxins, heavy metals, chemicals, plastics, whatever from the cells. But we're also detoxing thoughts from our mind and emotions from our muscles, from our body. So the detox happens at all levels. And the more open you are to go deep with it, the deeper it will take you. And we are making space. When you detox, you make space and you make space for new habits, for new nutrients in the body at a physical level. We remove those old dirty stuff. So we make space for good nutrients to come in and so we can function better. At a mental emotional level is exactly the same thing. We clean out all thought forms and patterns and ways of ingrained habits so that we can replace them with better ones. And then we see the benefits in our lives. It's not about making all these huge changes all at once or like being completely transformed and I will never go back to what I was before. No, really. I wish it worked like that, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. What it works like is that we have to have this daily practice of just bringing mindfulness and awareness to everything we do, including eating, especially eating, but also the way we look in the mirror, the thought forms, the slippery slope we get into when we try on those jeans and they don't fit. What are you going to go into like beating up on yourself? Or are you going to remember that you're about to get your period and you're three pounds heavier because you're just retaining water from your hormones? And then in two weeks, the genes are going to fit again or in 10 days. Right. Or are you going to go into this downward spiral of like, oh, nothing is working. So I might as well just go for the donuts and forget <laughs> everything about it and like leave me alone in my misery, me and my 20 donuts. Right. It's easy to go there. It's so true. You know, it's really easy. And that's also the all or nothing mentality. Yes. Where we easily want to throw everything away, baby and water. (laughs) Yes. And just like devalue every single step that we have made. Which you just have to look, especially with keto and especially for women and especially short term keto, you have to look beyond your physical self. You have to look at the other things that are changing in your energy level and your sleep and your hormones and your menstrual cycles. There's so many other little things that we almost just kind of forget to even care about, but they're such huge, important things that we really need to put more emphasis on that because that's a sign of your body healing versus how do my skinny jeans look today? If we can take a step back and not put so much weight on that physical stuff, because it's going to come, but it's not going to come until your body's ready. It's going to be kind of the last thing to fall into place, especially when you're doing a really healthy, holistic, ketogenic plan. And so until then, you have all these other amazing things that are happening that you can actually be really grateful for. And I really think, you know, something that I know you're really passionate about too, is like those feelings of gratitude and happiness and joy and just being present in the moment and not always going towards that negative talk is so huge to like actual physical, mental, emotional, spiritual healing, all of it. Mm -hmm. And the other part that I think it's really important and is part of what we're doing right here right now is the support and like the mutual support that we need to give each other as women. The relationship with women amongst us women is very complex right now. And there is all this talk of the movement, the women movement. We are coming out, we're regaining our power and we're stepping up. We're not taking abuse anymore. All those beautiful things are happening. But at the same time, I really feel like the base of the self-love, it's also the reflection in the sisterhood and the work we do together, because this is community work, collective work that we need to do together to regain that footing 
and regain our place in the bigger scope of things and bring back this feminine energy into the planet today that desperately needs it because we're really out of balance, as we can see. But every single one of us is called to this work and to stepping up for ourselves. We also really have to see how the moment you do your own work, you do work for everybody. And the moment you give yourself love and compassion, you're going to be able to be loving and compassionate for everybody else, especially other women. Mm -hmm. So if you look in social media, if you look in the media in general, and this whole, like, I don't go there very often at all, but celebrity cult and like self-image and this whole like gossip and attacking negativity, all of this around women, objectification, we have been so brainwashed into this mentality that we have really taken on to each other a worse even position than what men have done to us. Or, you know, the masculine in general has done to the woman, the feminine. And we have gone, become more vicious and more separate amongst us than even with the men on the other side. <laughs> I feel like as we start to be loving and compassionate to ourselves, that's when we regain the ability to have a true sisterhood and have the true support system with each other to remind us that we are in this together, not to judge, not to point fingers or talk about, you know, your genes are skinnier than mine kind of thing, <laughs> but to really, truly be supportive and accepting. And it is collective work that we need to do together. Yes, I so agree. And I think it's really important that we have people like you and me as practitioners who are very into that sort of, of course, the holistic approach to keto, which I'm so happy to connect with people like you and be able to spread the word, but also women who understand women and understand our emotions and how we can really change a lot about our lives and ourselves by changing that. So I think it's really important that we continue to share that message, but then also our community. And I'm so grateful to have such an amazing supportive keto for women and even more so the Fat Burning Female Project community, especially in a spot where, you know, I think you would agree the keto community can be pretty fierce. It can be pretty harsh sometimes. And it's so nice to have our own little support group within this that full of women who are supportive and in the right mental space and willing to do the work and see keto as a lifestyle and, and really see keto for what it is. So I'm so grateful to have that and so grateful to have people like you, again, like I said, just spreading the word along with me because that's what we really need in this keto community. That's right. It's so important. Okay, so we're wrapping up and it was such a great talk. I'm so happy that you were able to share everything and just be so open. But tell people a little bit more about where they can find you, what you're doing, how you can help them. We'll get a little bit of that. Yes. So my website is called The Nourished Caveman. And I actually got to get a facelift finally. <laughs> it's Yay! Occasionally you need to refresh things. So Yes, agreed. This coming week, beginning of April, I'm going to be launching a new website, thenourishcaveman.com. And of course, I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, a little bit of everywhere. And you do lots of recipes, correct? Yeah, that's part of the work I do. There is a lot of keto recipes on the blog. And then I have a book that just came out. It's called The Keto Paleo Kitchen. Which is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. It's kind of just a good, solid recipe book to start eating that way. The recipes are really, I guess, a little more involved. I don't know. For me, they're really simple, but people tell me they're gourmet. So <laughs> <laughs> there is the book. And then I work through a program. I'm actually about to launch a number of programs. So for different kinds of involvement, how people want to get you know, into keto adaptation or first steps with keto or really go for the full life transformation. So I offer different levels of consulting and supporting and this is not just with ketogenic diet, but the whole keto paleo lifestyle. And of course, cleaning up your life, like detoxing and learning what is really going on. Endocrine rebalancing, it's a big part of what I do with thyroid, with adrenals, with sex hormones. Love it. 
That sounds so awesome. And thank you again so much for being here, sharing your knowledge and passion. I mean, again, that's another thing we have in common, but it's so important in this keto space is to have the passion for true, real health and not just the quick fix. So thank you so much, Vivica, for being here. It was a great chat. Thank you, Sean. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. 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 